down off in the distance there's a tower so that'll be my final uh, turnaround point and come back I'm just gonna try to maintain altitude in this wind here and see how to handle it's the best way to test the tune is in some strong wind but if it flies steady here it's good and I'm sure I got to make some tweaks on them but uh, we'll see how they do I'm not gonna be pushing it too hard just going to be uh, gliding with the breeze, going down and coming back, I'm going to be hauling ass with it. Here's the 4S. It's a nice flight. I like this frame, it's a pure X frame. The cage is small, so you don't got a lot of room for anything extra, but the necessities, it'll fit in there. And I put the camera adjustment here to adjust this camera. I'm gonna need to set the tilt on it before I take off with it, but the other one that I just built yes yesterday is a 6S Gen Fan props. Mambas, powerful motors. This hauls ass, and it's not even—it's not even at full throttle, and it's hauling ass on a punch out. So, it's a bad boy. We're gonna put it to the test today. The other ones that I bought out, my uh, old trusty. Uh, Mr. Croc Flywoo 5 inch 6S and I put a crossfire on my GEP RC uh, Croc 7 inch old old school Croc from back in the day I got a 6S 2250 I'm going to put on it and, and, and fly and it has a run cam uh, split in there with the SD card so we're gonna get at it all right so I'm gonna jump on this and get packs loaded up everything pre-flight check and we'll be right back with you I walked all the way down there and done 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 the, the grid on it and came up came came back on it not too far from where I parked at. So, I'm probably maybe 100 meters, maybe 100 meters of that. So, I'm gonna have to check the firmware or something, or maybe swap out to a different receiver, maybe an RXSR. But, uh, I definitely get it, didn't get the range I was expecting. So, no damage uh, I think I got a loose uh, battery harness here so I'm gonna replace that just to make sure I don't uh, have any actual power fail safe from power not getting through so hopefully I can get back. I ain't got no ticks on me. But it's the twilight. As y'all can see right there. Sun's going down. I got my LEDs all set up. Got my crossfire ready. No worries. You know what I'm saying? You can fly that crossfire with a peace of mind. I love that crossfire. As long as you have it set up right, you're good to go. Check back with you. Setting up the croc. Made in flight with these gem fans. Interesting time, FPVN. Now I know why I'm fail safe. I mean, I got two powerful towers right here. Then I got this electrical distribution station. And I got these, uh, Towers probably putting out 900 and 2.4 gig. 
because I fail safe close on my uh, 2.4 gig setup. Yeah, on my 2.4 gig setup, I, re I fail safe closer than I thought. Way closer. So now, I slide my crossfire and I had to kill it because I saw some guy wires coming up and my my two nemesis with fine FPV are light poles, guy wires, and sign posts. If they're out there to be hit, I'll hit it. <laughs> so I've learned to critique my flying style to try to fly at certain heights and look for certain things as I'm flying. And today, I saw guy wires closer to me by the car. And I was out here flying and saw some more guy wires and I tried to avoid them. However, I was right next to the fence line. So, uh, I'm out here doing a recovery. Uh, cause I was trying to avoid a guy wire. Now I need to check my setup to see where I need to be right now. Cause once again, I'm probably uh, further out than I need to be. Check back with you. All right, yeah, so once again, I was walking further out than I need to. Oh, luckily this time, everything stayed connected up. I was able to activate my beeper. Drone found, drone found. So you can see here, even if I didn't have a beeper, I, I would have been able to see that orange tape. Yeah, so that's one reason why I put orange tape on the bottom of my drones. It doesn't, it's, it's definitely, hold on a minute here. So it's definitely not, uh, appealing to look at, but when you're out in grass like this, it's kind of high, but not. Beautiful sunset there. But yeah, when it's a little thick, that orange tape, a visual sight, it's a good thing. But in this case, I had both. So I zoomed in on it quick. So I'm gonna fly another quad that I bought. I'm gonna give the uh, crocodile a break because hey, if it wasn't for the wind blowing, I think I would have had a smooth flight all the way through. But going out is bumpy of course because you're flying into the wind. And now, when you get out there and come back, the wind's at your back. She was smooth. She was smooth. So, I can probably tighten up my eye gain just a bit. But other than that, pretty much the default tune with Beta Flight is good on the croc. And I'm running the older version 4.2.11. Just seems to handle the quads that I have that are seven inch a lot better than the uh, 4.4. Now on my five inch quads with GPS, I got the 4.4 and I ain't got no problems, but for some reason, trying to tune a seven inch on 4.4, it's a kind of a hassle. I mean, there's a lot of features built in that 
I think it just increases the odds of not getting a good tune. So that's why I put 4.2 back on. Oh. Wrapping it up. It's been an interesting evening here at this new location. Uh, there's definitely interference from the uh, distribution station and the uh, cell towers. But I found out if I keep at a certain altitude, it doesn't really affect me. You know, and I was flying my crossfire, so I didn't get any fail safe on that. Um, but uh, the 2.4 gigahertz setups, I did get interference and fail, fail safe where I shouldn't have. But anyway, just a little spot I found. I was out today. And, you know, sometimes it just come upon a new, uh, new spot. So this may be a spot that I check in the future. But, uh, it's pretty much just a straight run out and back. There's not too much else you can do. You can, free, you can freestyle it going and coming back, you know. That's about it. I'll let you later. Peace. I thought I'd get this on video for all y'all pilots out there that may tend to play the radio on your car and you're cruising, flying, enjoying yourself and then all of a sudden when you get ready to go home, dead battery. Yeah, I found myself in that spot tonight. So, uh, I got me a 14 uh, volt battery, a four cell battery. I got me a piece of wire, a battery connector, let me show you what I got set up here. I got my bad four cell, the one that I don't really care about. 1500 amp or milliamp battery. We got the positive connected, negative connected. A little uh, XT60. I'm going to plug it up and crank it. It, it, it happens fast, so... I gotta come back out here and disconnect this battery as fast as possible because it's just me doing it. But here it goes. Gotta get myself set up. And when I get it connected, I'm just going to yank this whole thing off to disconnect the four cell. Alright, I'm connected up. And that's how we do it. That's how we do it. Don't waste your money on those expensive battery chargers and jumps, jumper systems. Get yourself a 4 inch battery. But you gotta move quick because it will overheat and get hot. So, that's my basic setup. A 120 volt appliance cable wire. Strip down to where I can wrap it around the, the a post of the battery or the frame of the car and you crank it and that's all you need when you're stranded out there that's all you need right there hillbilly survival kit 101 montgomery city missouri out